started with some forward folding. So we're going to do some stretching for our hamstrings, for our lower back, a little bit into our calves. I get you to go to the back of your mat and just widen out your feet just so they're underneath your hips. And then we're going to go ahead and let our body round down. And take a look at my back. You'll see that there's actually quite a bit of rounding in it. As long as you have no issues with your spine, no um, disbulge or anything like that, then feel free to allow your back to round out like mine is. should feel some stretch through your low back through your mid-back and then we're aiming to get our fingertips to the floor to begin with if you can let's hook our fingers just underneath our toes and if that requires you to bend your knees like I have right now to get those fingertips under your toes by all means and then we're gonna work on exhaling and straightening out our knees if you already have straight legs, I'm going to get you to work on exhaling and bending your elbows instead. So as you bend those elbows, we're going to activate our biceps, and then we're going to be pulling our head down towards our knees. Try it again. Take a big breath in, and on your exhale, either straightening your knees, or if they're already straight, we're bending our biceps. Again, looking for a big stretch to the back of our legs into our hamstrings there, and then as well as through our back. Try it again. Breath in. Rib cage gets big. Exhale, deepen into the stretch. Try again. Big breath in. Exhale, deepening into the stretch. This should feel pretty relaxing, especially if you're doing this thing first first thing in the morning. You'll probably wake up, and if you're anything like me, a fair bit of tightness, especially through our legs. And good. I'll get you to rebend those knees a little bit, and we're just gonna roll up nice and slow. I know you might get a little bit of a head rush there. Go ahead and roll your shoulders out. And now we're going to do the opposite. Instead of a forward bend, we're going to do a backward bend. Let's go hands up over top of your head. And just take a look at my elbows. So I'm going to lock out my elbows and have biceps right beside the ears. So we're trying to avoid this, hands out in front of our body. Let's get those hands right up over top of our head. And then squeeze your glutes, your butt cheeks. And then it's a little bit of a backward bend. And you can see here I'm not doing very much at all. Just working on pushing my hips forward, getting a stretch through the abs, through your hip flexors, and then activating those low back muscles. Squeeze butt cheeks on your exhale, a little bit more of a backward bend. And then we'll dive back forward here. So we're alternating between forward bend and a backward bend. And this combination is an awesome combo to get started. We get a huge amount of stretch through our legs. Uh, stretch through our stomach, through our back, and then at the same time activate all those muscles. So we're prepping those muscles to do a whole lot of work. Let's just be here for a second, to take a breath in, and then you can exhale and pull a little bit deeper into this forward fold. Good. Rebend those knees, slowly come on up, interlace your fingertips, and we immediately go straight arms pointing up to the ceiling, biceps by your ears, and then a little bit of a backward bend again. Instead of thinking how far are you bending backwards, think about how far you can push your hips forward. And naturally that turns into a bit of a backward bend, but more importantly it squeezes your glutes, which protects your low back. Good, and I'll get you to fold forward one more time. And this time let's go hands right down onto the mat. Go ahead and let's walk on out, and we're into a plank position. And then I'll get you to slowly lower your body down. You can do that from your knees or your toes. We're going to curl up. Squeeze your glutes here. So again, a little bit of an activator in our lower back muscles. And let's push back. Downward dog. I'll get you to bend one knee, straighten the other knee. That straight leg, hopefully we're touching our heel to the floor. Let's bend the opposite knee, straighten the opposite leg, touch the opposite heel to the floor. Try it again. So you can imagine what we're doing right now. By pushing our hips up to the ceiling, we're using a bit of core strength, some shoulders, some triceps, and then we're getting a nice little stretch in the back of our legs again, particularly in our calves here. And come back into plank. Squeeze your glutes again, and then slowly lower on down. Chest touches. Curl yourself up. And then pushing back. Bend one knee, straighten the other. Bend one knee, straighten the other. And we'll go through this one more time. Back into your plank. Squeeze your glutes. Slowly come on down. Chest comes up. Push back. Down dog. And if you can, try two heels to the floor. Huge stretch in your calves. Butt up to the ceiling, making a little bit of a pyramid shape. 
get those hips up, and then, good, you can lunge out of that. I'll get you to come again to the back of your mat, and we're going to go into a lunging series here. I'm going to start with my left leg forward. So we've got left leg forward, straighten out that back leg. Again, we should feel a little bit of a stretch here in our right hip flexor, so the front of the right hip, hands on your hips, starting out into a little bit of a backward bend. I'm going to get everyone to follow along with me now. I'm going to get you to take your right hand, and we're going to lead that right hand around our body, fingertips pointing right back behind our left shoulder. Take a look over your left shoulder. So this is a lunge and a twist. Feel a little bit of core muscles going on. Feel some stretching through your back. Take a look back forward, and then in one big step, we're coming all the way back. Let's try it again. Right leg comes forward, sitting down. A little bit of a backward bend. Chest is open, so this is a good stretch for our shoulders and our chest. And then we'll turn and look over our right shoulder this time. Turn and look, turn and look, turn and look. Weights on your heel, front heel. Back to center, push back. Let's try it again. Left side comes forward. Weight into that left heel. Straighten out your back leg. Turn and look over your left shoulder. And back to center. Push it on back. Last one. Again, looking for that 90 degree angle. Front leg, 90 degrees in the knees. Chest open. Hands on your hips to begin. Turn and look over your shoulder. Back to center. And push back. Sweet. I'm going to get you to take your mat. Let's pull it off to the side. And I'm just going to get you to go into a couple little shoulder rollouts. And then we'll get right into our workout. So... Our first exercise is hugely cardio intense. Actually, today's workout is a pretty cardio intense one, I admit. So get ready to get your sweat on because we're going to be moving. Let's reverse those shoulder shrugs. Whenever we're doing a shoulder shrug, be really conscious about the movement we're doing. We're trying to touch our ears and then we're trying to pull away from the ears, making a long neck and then finally pushing our chest forward. Let's do one more. Good. First exercise. I'm going to get you to do this with me. We're going to have right foot planted slightly forward of our left, and then take a look what I'm going to do. It's called a curtsy lunge, crossing the left foot over behind the right. Can I get you to try this with me? And everyone just hanging out here. A level one, all I want you to do is this. A little bend in our front leg, back leg crosses over, so you notice my left foot is out to the side of my right, bringing the feet together. Try it on the other side. We're just going to do a little curtsy lunge, cross over. Notice not a huge bend in that front knee, and then feet side by side. Cross it over side by side, cross it over. And anyone that's been doing Make Your Body Work for a while knows where we're going with this. This is an awesome, awesome exercise we're about to do cardiovascular wise, leg strength wise, and then particularly glute strength. Next level of difficulty would be add a little bit of arm movement here. Check it out. Let's, I'll come back to center and right foot's gonna stay planted. I'll get you to cross that left leg over. Left hand comes down and touches to your knee. And notice that I didn't do this, bend over at my hips. Instead, I bent my knee and dropped down a little bit lower. Then if you can, a little bit lower. And if you can, come on down and touch your toe. You'll notice if you're touching your toe, it requires a little bit of a forward bend, but we're trying to bend primarily with that knee. And then let's switch over to the other side. Same thing, you can come on down and touch. And come on down and touch. Come on down and touch. And so on, this is called a speed skater. You can imagine why, it looks like someone's pushing off on the ice skating side to side. Uh, we're going to be here for 60 seconds. In fact, all of our exercises today are going to be 60 seconds. We've got five of them. Are you ready to get going? Let's start. Right foot's planted. Start with me nice and slow and then we'll pick it up. We've got a touch and a touch and a touch and a touch. While you're doing this, think about chest up facing towards me. Chest up. Good. And we'll pick up the pace just a little bit. Again, when we're doing this one, everyone can go at their own pace. So someone who's just starting out, feel free. You don't need to do the touch. Work on your curtsy lunge. Maybe a little bit slower pace. If you ever feel any work in your low back that feels uncomfortable, chances are we're probably bending at the, at the hips as opposed to bending our front knee. I want you to think about bend that front knee or maybe just touch your knee as opposed to your toe. Good. We're going to pick it up. We've got about 22 seconds left. Let's go. Touch. Touch touch, touch, good, heart rate should really be going right now, that's it, chest up facing towards me, and we're almost there, we've got eight seconds, good, let's go for four touches, one, two, three, 
four, and that's all she wrote. I'll get you to come on down, and let's take our mat. And I've got knees on my mat, thumbs just on the outside of my mat. Try it with me. We're going to go into a plank position, hang out here. Level one, we're hanging out here. Level two, we're going to bring one knee in, opposite knee in. What does that look like? Yeah, mountain climber. Next level, it's going to look like this. A tuck, jump back into the plank. So that's a half of a burpee. We're going to be doing half burpees for five reps, followed by a push-up, followed by five reps, followed by a push-up. We're going to be here for a minute. Again, I'll start it slowly. You can pick up the pace. Push-up, you have an option. You can do it from your knees in a box position. You can do it from knees, modified position. You can do it from toes or you can do a plyometric push-up. Let's do it together. I'll start out very, very slowly. And then, like I said, we'll pick it up. Here we go. Everyone's here, holding a plank, or stepping in, or jump in with me. Jump back, there's one, do it again. Two, three, four, five. And now your push-up on your knees, toes, or plyometric. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Ready? It's a push up. One, two, three, four, five, and push up. One, two, three, four, five, and push. Let's go. One, two, three. That's it, four, hips low, five, and push. We're gonna do one more. One, two, three, four, five, and push. Awesome work. You should feel a ton in your abs, a ton in your shoulders. I'll get you to flip over onto your back. We're into a supine row, elbows by your sides, heels tuck in, feet flat on the floor. Level one with a very long neck, chin away from your neck. I want you to take a breath in, exhale, push your elbows into the floor, a little mini crunch. Next level of difficulty, we're coming up a bit higher. Next level of difficulty, really think driving your elbows in, try it with me. Exhale, full height, little hold, come on back down. Let's try it for a minute, ready? It's an exhale, hold with me. Come on back down. Try it again. Squeeze your back muscles, the back of your shoulders, through your, it's your traps, your upper back, the muscles just above your shoulder blades, little hold. Plus your abdominal muscles are assisting you big time. So this should feel like a combination of back and ab work all in one move. Come on down. Exhale right back down. And I get it. This is tough. After doing those half burpees or plank or whatever it was you were just doing, our core muscles are already tired, which makes this a lot of work. Exhale. For some people, this becomes very challenging in the neck muscles. And you're going to notice this wants to happen, tucking that chin in. Don't let it happen. If it becomes too much for your neck, sit one rep out and then come on back up. Good, let's go again. And we got one more rep after this. Ready? Drive those elbows in and come on down. Nice. Let's come right back up. And I'll get you to fold your mat all the way out. You need a little space behind your mat. So we're going to be doing some leg work here as well as a little bit of agility work and a lot of cardio. I'm going to get you to come on over to the side of your mat. Notice where my toe is. My inside toe is lined up with the outside corner of my mat. I'm going to sit down. Can I get you to do it with me as well? Weight in your heels. Chest is up. And we're going to sidestep. Staying low. Toe on the inside, or inside toe, outside corner of my mat. Try it again. Sidestep. Sidestep. 
So I know you need a little bit of space here. Side step. Good. And side step. Staying as low as possible. We're going to have 60 seconds on the clock. We're moving for pace while staying deep. So I don't want you up here doing this side step. I'd rather you a little bit slower, but staying lower. There you go. We're going to go for one minute. Let's all come to the side of our mat. Sit on down into that nice deep squat. Weight in your heels. And let's move. Staying low. Staying low. Make sure that foot clears the outside of your mat. So we're going that same approximate six foot distance with each set of side steps. Stay low. Stay low. Chest is up. Can I get you to really think about bringing your chest up to face towards me as opposed to rounding forward and letting that back sort of round in your lower back. We want almost a backward bend. Face up towards me. Good. We're halfway. That's it. I'm going to pick up the pace. Side step. Side step. Side step. Good. Try and stay with me. Side step. Side step. Good. Stay low. Quad should be burning. That's it. 15 seconds. Let's go again. Nice. And here we go. Really going to move for this last 10 seconds. Good. Let's do two more. There's one and two. Nicely done. Quad should be burning. Heart rate should be going. Last exercise. Come on down into your mat. We'll go on all fours. Do this with me. We're going to move our right knee into the midline of our body. So it's right in between our two hands. Pick up that left foot. So you can see my left knee floating in space here. Let's try a fire hydrant. Looks something like this. We're going to pick that knee up. Take a look at my shin parallel to the floor. Not down here. Especially not up here. Parallel to the floor. Kick it straight back. Side by side. We're up. We kick back. Side by side. Up. Parallel to the floor, kick back, side by side, up, kick back, side by side. So I'm talking about our knee position. Knees are side by side, shin is up, kick it back, side by side, last one, kick it back, side by side. Let's switch over and opposite knee is up, kick back. When we go for our kick back here, think about kicking with your heel back as opposed to pointing your toe. Notice when you do that, it really engages your glutes. And that's what we're going for here is we're looking for a butt exercise. And it doesn't mean we're just training to have a nice looking butt. Oh, I spent so much time writing articles, filming videos, talking about the importance of glute strength for any athlete male or female, any exerciser that's looking to squat better, jump higher, run faster, kick back. Let's do three more on this side. You might notice in this exercise, your planted leg, so in this case, my left leg here, that glute is working a whole lot. It's balancing over 50% of our body weight through that planted left leg, so our butt cheek should be working on both sides. Kick back, and nice. Relax. Let's grab our water. Five exercises. We're going to be working on the clock this time with no breaks in between. So we're just going to go right through those. It'll be a five minute circuit. Speed skater. Then we go into our half burpee plus a push up. It should take your mat out of the way. Or you can leave your mat. Uh, lying out in front of you. As long as you have room to do the speed skater, generally we don't want to do it on the mat. Our feet tend to get caught. Can you feel your glutes right now? We're about to do another glute exercise right here, speed skater. So I'm going to start with right leg planted, crossing over, curtsy lunging with the left. Let's go for 60 seconds. And we're going to go in three, two, one. Let's go. We got to touch, touch. Good. And remember, everyone's got their own pace. Just think chest up and check in with your lower back. 
like I said, at no point should there be any pain in the low back. If there is, we don't touch our toe anymore. We touch our knee or our shin. Good. Quick little movements here. This is a very plyometric exercise, so it's like little jumps in between each touch. Good. That's halfway. And let's keep this pace. Touch, 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 touch. Chest is up. Come on. Really should be feeling glutes. Really should be feeling quads. Yep. And we're going to do five more. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome work. If you want your mat, let's put it down. We're going to move very quickly into this next exercise. We're set up into our plank. Hips stay low. Let's go. We're in for one. Two, three, four, five, push up. Let's go. One, two, hips low. Three, four, five, push up. One, two, three, four, five, and push. One, two, three, four, five, and push. Again, one, two, three, four, five, push. We're going to go one more. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and flip over. Take a breath. Tuck those feet in, elbows in. Ready? And it's a row. Slowly back down. I can't say this enough. Push your elbows into the floor. We don't want this to be just an ab exercise. We're trying to engage the back of our shoulders and our back muscles. Breath in. Exhale. Breath in. Again, exhale. Breath in. Get ready, because after this minute, we're right into our side step. So we're going to have to transition quite quickly by lying our mat out in front of us. Let's go again. Let's do three more. Here we go. For one. Good. Again. Two. And last one. Chin away from the chest. Three. There's our minute. And we're up. Let's get set up here. Fold that mat out. Come to your side of your mat. Inside foot lined up with the outside of your mat. And let's move. One. Two. Everyone's at your own pace. I'm trying to do a pace that we can maintain for 60 seconds. Remember your goal here is staying nice and low in the squat. As opposed to picking up your pace and standing out of the squat. Stay low. Touch. 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 Touching that foot to the outside of the mat. Inside foot to the outside of the mat. Good. And we're just about a halfway. Let's go. We got 30 seconds right now. Touch. Yep. Great job. After this, we've got 30 seconds a fire hydrant on either side. Come on. Let's move. 10 seconds. Come on. Go. Let's get five more. We got one, two, three, four, and five. Come on down. On all fours. Left, actually, I'm going to go opposite side. Left leg's planted, right knee up. Kick back, heel back, side by side with your knees. Here's the chance. Let that heart rate come down. Knee up. Kick back, side by side. Knee up. Kick back, side by side. <laughs> Knee up. Is anyone else breathing heavy right now? Side by side. Knee up. Kick back. We got to switch. 
knees up, shin parallel to the floor, kick back. So your level of difficulty right here is really determined by the height of our shin. If we're hanging out here, yeah, it engages the glutes. Big difference if we're up here. Kick back, side by side. Knee up, shins parallel to the floor. Check in, take a look at your shin here. Is it truly parallel? This is a great exercise to do in front of a mirror or with a partner so you can know if your shin is actually parallel to the floor, our tendency is to lead with our heel and do something like this. Much less glute need the outside of our butt cheek. Let's go last one. Kick. And that is it. Grab your water. We've got another time through this circuit. Butt cheek really should be tired by the end of that set of kickbacks. So we'll take about 30 seconds in a break here. And then we've got our speed skater. Tune in with your body. How does it feel? I'm hoping heart rate's going a little bit. I'm hoping glutes are worked a little bit. Quads, of course, core. Shoulders test, triceps. I know it's all going. So we're going to get started in about six seconds here. Get you to line up your two feet side by side. And let's go. We got to touch, touch. And we're moving. Speed skater. Think about crossing over that back foot. It's not a reverse lunge. It's a crossover, a curtsy lunge. Cross it over, cross it over. That's the way. And think, this is the last time you got to do this exercise. Let's make it count. Move and move. That's it. Again, chest is up facing towards me. And we're just halfway done. 30 seconds left. Let's move. Good. Again, chest up. Bending that front knee. 15. Let's get 10 touches. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Grab your mat. We've got our hands on the outside of the mat into a plank. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Plank, push up. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Again with me. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Quad should be burning. Abs should be burning. One, two, three, four, five. Push. One more. One, two, three. Hips low. Four, five. Push. Great job. No time for a break. Flip it. Elbows pushing into the side, right beside your rib cage into the floor. Breath in. Breath in. Exhale. Breath in. Exhale. And this one again. Elbows push into the floor. This one is replicating a seated row at the gym. Like we're pulling a very heavy weight towards our chest. But instead of pulling a weight, we're pulling our body up off the floor. So our body weight against gravity is that weight. Good. We've got time for five. Let's go. One. And two. Good. Three. Get ready to lay your mat out, so we need to move quickly. Four, into our side step. Five, and we're up. Let's take that mat. Lie it out in front of us. And come to the outside of your mat. Squat down, and let's move. Side step, 
side step, side step. Make sure you're clearing your mat each direction. I know it's easy to turn this into a little partial side step and cheat a couple inches on either side. Make sure you get that inside foot right to the outside of your mat and move and move. Light on our toes. Good. Again, staying low in our squat. Touch, touch, halfway. Touch, touch. Good, chest is up, butt is back. And let's move. Good, 20 seconds. You can do it, stay low, stay low. I know heart rate's going, we got 10 seconds, come on, stay with me. There you go. Let's go five touches. One touch, two, three, four, five. Great work. We've got our hydrant into a kickback. All fours on the floor, right knee comes in. We're up, kick. Let's try it again. Kick. Slow down that heart rate. Take a big breath in. Big exhale. I know that's a lot of work what we just did. My heart's going to. Let's go. Knee up. Kick back. Again. We're up. Kick back. We're in. Let's do three more on this side. Up. Kick back. Side by side. We're up. Kick back, side by side. Again, up, kick back, side by side. Last one, knees way up, kick back, and let's switch. As I mentioned before, both glutes should be getting a workout in this one, not just the one that's doing the hydrant. Kick back, side by side. We're up, kick back, side by side. Especially after what we did today. Today's a monster butt workout. Speed skaters, huge glutes. When we do our side step, every lateral push off is initiated from our glute and side by side. And then this one obviously is very targeted toward our glute towards our glutes. So two more. Kick back. Last one. Kick back. And done. Grab your water and we're gonna stretch it out. to lie down on your back, feet flat on the floor, and I've got two knees facing up. Let's go right knee, crosses over left, and then we're going to go left hand up, grab onto those knees, pull them on down. It's called spine twist. I'll get you to do this piece with me as well. Let's go right hand up, drop it down to the floor on your right side, look over your right shoulder. Spine twist, cervical spine, so our neck, our upper back, looking towards the right, thoracic spine, the middle of our body facing straight up, lumbar spine, our lower body right down into our tailbone, facing to the left. Really should feel a big stretch in your right butt cheek, maybe a little bit into the lower back on the right side, and then a little bit in your shoulder and chest muscle on the right side. If you feel comfortable, and if your right shoulder is touching the floor, pull your knees down towards the floor on the left. Please just make sure your right shoulder is touching. If it's not, let your knees come up away from the floor, pin that right shoulder to the floor, and then move back into the stretch a little bit deeper. That's all it takes, let's go other side. Again, that should be pretty intense into the butt cheeks. Specifically, that one was for your right butt cheek. Here we go for our left, so I crossed left knee over, Right hand comes up, grabs those knees, pulls them down to the side. Left hand comes up, look over your left shoulder, and then let that left shoulder touch the floor. That's your key ingredient, left shoulder's gotta be touching the floor. And the reason I say that is, it's easy to feel like we're moving into a stretch very deeply, but just by changing up the form, and then that sort of actually misses the stretch. So your example here would be, if someone were to roll over and let that shoulder come off the floor, all of a sudden, my knees touch the floor very easily, 
but you can see this huge gap between my shoulder and the floor. If I were to flatten that out, now I feel such a bigger stretch. Left butt cheek, left low back, left shoulder and chest, but my knees came up off the floor, and this is my preferred position. Bigger stretch, who cares about the depth? We're looking for how much of a stretch you can get. Perfect. We're gonna move from there. I like to do this in combination. The spine twist is almost a bit of a warm-up stretch for a figure four. Let's cross right ankle over left knee. Right hand goes in between your two legs, left hand on the outside, interlace the fingertips behind your left knee, and then I'm gonna get you to roll back. Pull left knee into shoulder, chin tucks in, both shoulders pull flat on the floor. The biggest key ingredient in this one to get a good stretch is the position of your left knee. The left knee must be hovering right over top of the left shoulder or pulling towards the left shoulder. You're going to notice it wants to drift in towards the middle of your body. That really moves away from the stretch. If you want, you can go over top of your knee, get a little bit deeper stretch, a little more leverage here. Good. And let's switch. And left hand goes through, right hand on the outside, right knee pulling towards right shoulder this time. Two shoulders down the floor, chin tucks in, back's flat on the floor, looking for that stretch, this time in your left butt cheek. And again, if you want, you can go over top of your knee, still try and pull those shoulders down to the floor, and still pulling right knee in towards our right shoulder, looking for a stretch in our glutes, left side, and curl up with me. We're gonna go butterfly position, over onto your right hip, turn your left foot over. We've got heel and knee touching, chest up nice and tall, and then we're gonna rotate clockwise, looking over our right shoulder. Looking for a stretch right now in our oblique, so the side of our stomach on your right side. You might feel it a little bit in your lower back as well. Look over your right shoulder, see if you can see the heel of your left foot. If not, that's okay, take a breath in. On your exhale, if it's comfortable, you can move a little bit deeper into the stretch. And that goes for everyone, wherever you're at, just sit here and breathe. After a couple breaths, as your muscles loosen up, you'll be able to turn and twist a little bit deeper into that stretch. Thinking chest up away from the floor. And let's go other side. Rolling over to the left hip, knee and heel touching, hands go down. Moving counterclockwise, looking over left shoulder, looking for the right heel over our left shoulder. That's it. And try it again with me, like I mentioned before, take a big breath in. On your exhale, let's see if we can twist just a little bit further. Good. And back to center. Last one, I know what you're thinking. We did half burpees, which is a ton of hip flexion, and we haven't done a hip flexor lunge yet. Here it is. Let's go up onto our knees, and I'm gonna start with my right leg. So we'll go, right leg comes forward. And then, if you're not sure, just watch my hips. Hips moving forward and down. Hands on your hips, chest open by pulling your shoulder blades back, and a little bit of a backward bend. I always say on here, when we do anything that pulls your knees towards your chest, we're gonna do this stretch. I don't want you to leave with uh, tight hip flexors. And occasionally I've done a workout where we've done an exercise like that and omitted doing this stretch and I always hear about it. Where was the hip flexor lunge? So I don't wanna leave you hanging today. Let's go for a couple more breaths here. Thinking about pushing that hip forward and down on each, each exhale. And again, thinking chest open, a little bit of a back bend. And let's switch. And this is one, for anyone that sits a lot during the day, it is such an amazing stretch. When we sit, we have tight hip flexors. This lengthens our hip flexors. 
And I know what you're thinking, okay, am I going to really go down and sit down in my office on one knee and do a hip flexor lunge? You know, probably not, but you can do this one standing as well. And we do it all the time. It's called a crescent pose. It's a lunge with a straight back leg and then a little bit of a backward bend. And it achieves the same purpose. So it's something you can practice, you know, maybe at noon hour, spend two minutes stretching out the hip flexors. Let's go down onto our knees. We'll do a couple shoulder rollouts, and then we're good to go. Shoulders up to the ears. Push the shoulders back, exposing the chest, stretching through the front shoulders, and then down away from the ears, stretching it through our traps, our upper back. So when we did all those pulls, the rows, really uh, engaging our upper shoulders or upper back muscles. This is a nice way to relax them before we go. Up to your ears, that's flexing your back muscles, opening up your chest, and then stretching those traps. I'm gonna get you to hold here. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. So we're making a long neck. And then I'll just get you to turn to the side and turn chin up. You might feel a little bit of a stretch down the outside of your neck. Let's try to the other side. Shoulders stay down. Turn, look over your opposite shoulder. Turn chin up. And come back to center. Nicely done. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Hopefully you had a, enjoyed that workout. I'll be back in a couple days with another great workout, and I hope to see you here. Take care.